Good evening. Thank you uh, for your remarks, and uh, I'm honored to be here, and to be here uh, at this great school, and uh, to be gathered together in this, this room with all of you tonight. It is, uh, uh, it's awe-inspiring, it's uh, definitely, uh, as I express uh, my work, uh, I express it from my heart. I hope you'll, you will truly feel that, and that you will open your minds and your, your hearts to maybe thinking outside the box as, as I share with you uh, what I refer to as, as the new biology. I would, I'm only half the man without my wife, so I always, I always start my lectures out uh, showing a picture of my wife because she looks a lot better than I do. Uh, but uh, uh, she, she's an incredible person and definitely a major part of, of my research. And uh, uh, I'll just tell you just a very quick story. We were in Trinidad with a group of, of a thousand folks down there, which really started my trek on trying to find the cure for diabetes. Uh, and, and, and these good folks, it was Friday night, I guess they didn't have anything to do because they came out to see us. We were quite surprised to see so many. And uh, my wife uh, is allowing me to go first and I, I get up there and speak to them and I say, you know, uh, we're going to have to give up our chicken and we're going to have to give up our fruit and they're about ready to, to throw me out uh, of the lecture hall. But, you know, during the lecture, uh, I, I asked how many of them were challenged with uh, diabetes. And when over 50% of them raised their hand, I was just totally awestruck. I, I, it took my breath away. I had no idea that diabetes was, was uh, to such a critical state in, in Trinidad, in the West Indies. And, and so at, at that point, uh, mentally, I made a commitment uh, to myself that, uh, that I would focus specifically on this particular condition. And uh, that's what uh, happened uh, over, over a decade ago, and, and my wife was listening to all this, and, and she, she said after the lecture, I says, you know, you, you share with all these folks all this wonderful information, but, uh, but to, you tell them don't eat this and don't eat that, and, and, uh, and, and you've got to start eating more green vegetables, and, and one of the gentlemen uh, that was there at the, at the lecture stood up and said, hey, Docman, we can't be eating the grass all of the day. And, <laughs> And, uh, and hopefully, as, as we talk, you won't get that impression, but, but Shelley, Shelley felt an extreme need to make this palatable, to make this workable, because it's, the science may be interesting, but if you, like this, uh, the sad results of this story of this woman going over to Germany and coming back, unfortunately, she, I believe, she did not have the information in order to maintain and sustain the quality of her internal environment. And so I begin with Ralph Waldo Emerson's quote, what lies behind us and what lies before us are tiny matters compared to what lies within us. Shelley understood this. She believes, as well as I believe, that healing should be simple and it should be affordable and available to everyone. And yet it's not the case. We have more medicine than any other country in the world, but we have one of the worst records for health. How can that be? I believe uh, Harvard has been a wonderful instrument in trying to define a better lifestyle and a better diet and was actively involved in creating, I believe, some of the new food recommendations. And I commend uh, those who are involved with developing better choices for what we should be eating. Uh, I, I think as you view what I talk about this evening, uh, takes it even one step further. Our mission is to change lives and to save lives. I can truly relate with Fred Rogers when he said, life is for service. Shelley and I have been involved in this mission for over 25 years. We are truly dedicated to find some answers as it relates to not one only causes sickness and disease, but what, what can make a difference in improving the quality of life and the quantity of life. An active intention, this is our intention, is to make life better to relieve the pain and suffering that many of us in this world experience and yet I believe is unnecessary.
This is more humorous, of course. <laughs> On Father's Day, of course, this was last year, uh, Shelley gave me a picture, uh, 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 caricature of myself. Now, I asked her, I said, honey, what are you trying to tell me? You think I have a big head or, you know, I just have a lot of information up there. Uh, but I must share with you because hopefully it'll understand a little bit about who I am and where I'm coming from. The most important assignment that I have is my relationship with my wife. We've been married for over 31 years. My second most important accomplishment is with our children. David O. McKay said this, no success in life can compensate for failure in the home. Our children, our home, and the center of that is the focus of our lives. And like Benjamin Franklin, I've been blessed to not only be a scientist, but now a farmer. So we live uh, on 45 acres in uh, beautiful, outside beautiful San Diego, uh, California, in what is called Valley Center at the Rancho del Sol, which is, of course, the Ranch of the Sun, which is appropriate because we're going to be talking a little bit about light here. All the rest of it uh, is, is uh, part of my secular education, with, which is informal as, as well as formal. Last month, I was invited by uh, Dr. Lawrence Carter, who's the dean. He's been the dean uh, there for over 25 years at the Martin Luther King Chapel. He was the protege of Martin Luther King. And this picture was very, very important to me. And the reason why is because I positioned the picture and at the request of Dr. Carter, who actually paid me the most incredible compliment. You know, when I, I, I mean, I, I hesitate to even share it with you. He called me the Martin Luther King of health and said, Dr. Young, you are going to be the savior of, my, of our people. And I said, I, 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 I didn't take that assignment. I mean, you know, yes, it's part of our mission statement, but what is the worth of a soul? And there you see behind us Gandhi, Martin Luther King, and Ikeda, who were all part of a peaceful revolution. And transformation is taking place even now, and it's moving forward. And many scientists are asking not only more questions, but better questions as it relates to what will improve the quality of life. I love what, what Gandhi said. We must be the change in this world we want to see. It must begin with us. I must be a representation of what I teach. If I want to see more love in the world, I must be the change of love I want to see. If I want more health, I can't wait for my spouse to change and start eating right and living right. I have to begin that change within me. And so, Martin, uh, and so uh, Dr. Carter has suggested that this is a very important mission which we're engaged in. And we are most excited to be involved in this mission at this time uh, because it has made a huge impact on so many lives. So tonight's discussion is going to be entitled Towards an Ethics of Healing, Feasting Upon the Light. Now when I think about light, that's somewhat arbitrary, but, but what comes to me as I think about that is this statement. For where there is light, there is life, for light is life and life is light. And the driving force of this light is a molecule. This molecule is the chlorophyll molecule, which literally acts as an electron, an electromagnetic sink, which literally pulls light within its, its, its cell. And the atom in the center of that molecular structure is called magnesium, which is the light carrier. And as Bircher Benner said, absorption and organization of sunlight, the very essence of light, is almost exclusively derived from plants. Plants are therefore a biological accumulation of light. Since light is the driving force of every cell in our bodies, this is why we need plants, and specifically green plants that carry that light 
which I have postulated is transformed into electrical potential or energy, which, of course, our body runs on. Not calories, but electricity, electrons, electrical potential, which we derive from the foods that we eat, and specifically, green foods. But there's this wonderful relationship that is going on between us and plants. Very simply, we give them carbon dioxide, they give us oxygen. They give us life. They give us light and life where they hold that within those chlorophyll molecules. The color of the food that I believe we should be eating is even defined scripturally in the Old Testament. Genesis chapter 1, specifically verse 30, and it says that every beast of the earth and every fowl of the air and to everything that creepeth upon the earth wherein there is life, which would include us too as well, I have given every, here's the color now, green herb for meat. And it was so. I believe that was very specific instructions as it relates to what we need to place into our body that will give us that light and energy in life that will then not only help to maintain our life, but to regenerate life. So I came up with a very simple formula. And I'll explain it uh, a little more scientific as we go on here. And that is light equals green. And we know this during the seasons. You all experience this during fall when the molecules of chlorophyll lose the light. We see a change that takes place within the color of the leaves of those trees. It goes from green and then yellow and then orange and then red and then brown and then it falls off. It loses its light or life force yeah. and therefore so we see a change even in the color of the leaves of trees which takes place in the fall. So light equals green. It's what get light. light is what gives the plant and the leaf its color. Now we're going to take a, a leap forward here. Green equals blood. And then blood equals flesh. And I'm going to talk uh, even more about this and show you some illustration. This is a professional bodybuilder that I was working, uh, still working with. And uh, you can see uh, that this, this man has uh, a tremendous uh, physique. In fact, uh, He's five foot six and 270 pounds. You think, well, I, I bet he's eating a lot of protein. And in reality, what is happening here is no different than the strongest animals in the world. Those who build their blood with green foods actually build stronger flesh or muscle. He builds his muscle with broccoli. He builds his muscle with grasses and grains. The theory here is that you build muscle with blood, not proteins. It is the blood that is built from green foods that then becomes muscle, bones, and sinews. We understand that the strongest animals in the world build their muscle and bones with what they eat, the green foods, which helps to build the blood. This, uh, this little experiment was, uh, was tried for a period of 12 weeks by Ryan Marcotte. Ryan Marcotte uh, entered a contest, which you're probably familiar with, that's been widely advertised, uh, called uh, the Body for Life contest. During that contest, he focused primarily all of his diet on green foods and green drinks. He eliminated all protein from his diet other than that which was naturally occurring from green plants. He eliminated all complex carbohydrates. He focused on low carbohydrates, those that had less sugars, and, uh, and also focused on the good healthy fats. Within 12 weeks, on the specific plan that I outlined for him, he was able to lose 31 pounds of fat gain 11 pounds of muscle. I think that's, that's, some, that's something to, to, to contemplate here because when we've taken our athletes off protein, which we do 
on every occasion, we find that we can increase strength, we can, we can increase endurance, and at the same time re reduce downtime as it relates to lactic acid uh, buildup from, uh, from the activity that particular athlete is performing. Now, Ryan Marcotte wasn't in the gym every day. He only went to the gym three times a week and spent anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour there. That was it. This is, was not a concentrated effort to try to build muscle uh, by causing certain stresses on specific muscles. The focus was to put more light, more green, to focus on building blood, and then by building blood to build muscle and bone. Not only do muscles and bones change when you focus more on these low carbohydrate green foods and good healthy fats, but since the skin is regenerating itself every 30 days, the transformation, as we see here, prior to the program, and we're looking at the blood here, and we can see here the neutrophilic activity here, and just so those uh, can understand, the ratio from white cell count to red blood cell count is one in every 750 to 1,000 red blood cells. So this is what we should be seeing. We should be seeing lots of red blood cells, and as we scan, once in a while we'll see a white blood cell. Now, as I've defined the white blood cells, they act like sanitation engineers. Their purpose, I believe, as I've watched them for the last 25 years, is not to destroy, not to attack, not to kill, but to clean up the mess that we create through our lifestyle choices. And the filthier our internal fluids are, the more white blood cells or the more garbage collectors we have. And unfortunately for this young woman, her diet was atrocious. Lots of protein, lots of sugar, and for most of her life, she was trying to find out the cause of her skin problems, which dermatologists could not answer. And there's a reason for that, because the problem is not on the outside, the problem is on the inside, and it's focused with her internal cleanliness as it relates to the blood specifically we see a high white count, neutrophilic white count here, and the red blood cells somewhat irregular in shape. Red blood cells should be nice and round and symmetrical. This transformation, after suffering skin challenges most of her life, looking like this within four weeks, a total transformation. No medications. The focus was cleaning up the internal fluids of the body and restoring balance to the fluids of the body at the same time focusing on building blood.